today is twosome of Rich Clark and Rich Lottie. And as we go to the top of the ladder three weeks from today, we'll see Gary Santora, who is sitting at the number one position. Let's meet our bowlers in the first match of the brand new season from Lita Lanes, our fifth seed, a participant in last year's Tournament of Champions, Rich Clark from Bedford, New Hampshire. Yes, Rich Clark finished seventh, didn't do too well in the Tournament of Champions. Perhaps he'll have better fate today. Average of 128, Rich's high single is 195, his high triple 467. And he has a couple of centers he calls home, the King Lanes in Manchester and Bot Wells in Concord. And he'll be taking on our fourth seed, Rich Lottie from Stoneham, Massachusetts. And Rich is returning as well. His average is 122. High single of 204. His high triple is 471. He uh, comes in at the fourth seed. Melrose Bowl is his home bowling center. Another season is upon us. Everyone shooting for a chance to be in the Tournament of Champions at the end of the year. Let's get right to it with our first match as we continue with Candlepin Stars and Strikes from Lita Lanes in Nashua on WNDS TV 50. We'll be right back. Ready to go with our first match of the brand new season. Rich Clark will be the first to bowl in this match against Rich Lottie. We're so happy that you've joined us for a brand new season of Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS TV 50. Dick Lutz with Mike Morin and Michael, uh, it seems like only yesterday when we were bringing the curtain down in the Tournament of Champions and a new season is upon us. It was an exciting finish back last April and a good start today with a spare. Rich Clark from Bedford was telling us before the match about the super corn at Clark's Farm in Bedford. Got to get the plug in there right off the bat. For well, it. supposedly he brought us some. Hasn't made the presentation yet, though. And he'll fill the spare with an eight. Yeah, he went through the whole definition of the three stages, three different seasons of corn within one growing year. And he starts out with a couple of spares. Of course, uh, $50 for three marks in a row. Our triple strike jackpot with a brand new season upon us starts at $500. And now Rich Lottie from Stoneham, Massachusetts. In the second pocket and a six fall. We had lots of nice cards and letters from you viewers during the summer months, and we'll talk about some of them as we get a chance during the course of the telecast. It's always great to know that you're out there and to know where you're watching, and we'd love to hear from you during the course of the season. We'll be giving you the mailing address from time to time. As Lottie starts out with a nine box. Rich Lottie, uh, of course, you saw him last season as a top ladder seed. He lost to uh, Rich Hawk Hallis. 337 to 320, and that was our lowest ladder championship match last year, Dick. Just missing the head pin again is Lottie. The one, the six, the eight, and the ten with some wood between the one and the six. Just missing the spare. The winner of this match will meet Jim Gregatis next week. Don Richmond is the second seed waiting in the wings, and at the top of the ladder is Gary Santora. And a 10 box for Lottie. Gary Santora really ran away from the field. He uh, was the number one seed at 689. All the other bowlers, two through five, were 636 to 626, so he was head and shoulders among the other four. Now Lottie working on two marks in a row. Punches a pair out. And almost converted. Five and the seven remain with some wood at an angle in front of the five pin. I don't believe it's touching the five, though. Thirty-nine through three for Rich Clark of Bedford, New Hampshire. If you'd like to take a shot at uh, getting on one of our TV ladder series, roll-offs are happening throughout the course of the year here at Lita Lanes as Rich Lottie picks up his 
third spare of the first string. Give Ray Simino or Sean Howard a call at Lita Lanes. The number 603-889-4884. It's 603-889-4884. And they'll be happy to give you the information about the next roll off and how you could win a spot on one of our telecasts of Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS TV 50. Today being October 4th, at least the first run of this broadcast, finals are being held for the next television taping this afternoon, even as we speak. First spare of the match for Lottie. on the head pin and a strike <laughs> to fill the spare. So both bowlers on the mark here in the first string. I'll tell you about a letter that we got from Leo McNeil of Canton, Massachusetts. Ouch. Porter Worcester. Some tough fills for Rich Clark. He's got three spares, but on two of them, a one and a two fill. And again, he almost converts. Leo McNeil asks, is powder usually put on the floor in the area behind the ball rack where the balls remain after they're returned from the pit? I checked with Ray Simino here at Lita Lanes, and his answer was no. No powder on the floor. I'm not sure that there's a rule in the Candlepin Bowling rules book uh, addressing that. Took a quick look for it, but I do know it's very dangerous. Some people do it. Please do not put talcum powder on the lens. If you're going to do anything, rub a little substance, maybe cigarette ashes, although fewer people are smoking these days, uh, on, on your sliding shoe, exactly, but not on the lane itself, and very, very little. Best to get some steel wool, Dick, and, and uh, kind of rough it off that way. Nine box for Rich Clark. 59 through 6. That's with three marks, which is really unusual. Well, the one pinitis is contagious, apparently. But no damage done since uh, you'll take the second ball for the fill on the strike. I said 59, of course. I was looking at the half. 68 through 6. And will he convert? Nine to fill the strike. And a 10 box. And a nine pin lead box to box for Rich Lottie. So Mr. McNeil, that's the answer to your question. The answer is no powder on the floor and thanks for your letter. And it's nice to know that you're watching from Canton, Massachusetts. Our runner-up today will take home $100 as we start from the bottom of the ladder and work toward the eventual top prize of $1,000. How's that for a shot for Lottie? Rich Lottie dazzling the crowd here at Lita Lanes with a great spare pickup. Now Rich Clark right on the head pin, leaving himself a spare opportunity here. Crowd entertained here at Little Lanes where they have installed new bleacher seats right behind us to give you a great view of the action. If you happen to stop by and watch our taping. As the pins continue to fall for Rich Clark. Scoring for the crowd on the floor is Chris Beauvair. Scoring up above on the electronic scoreboard is John Leach. And another spare for Rich Clark. His fifth mark of the first string. Trying to clear some wood uh, off of lane 33. They've made it. Finally made it off. Now Lottie working on a mark. Both bowlers setting a pretty fair pace here in the first string. Oh. 
on the spare a six for Lottie. too far on the right hand side hoping to get between the one and the two to take out the four and the eight in the back didn't happen has the side saddle triangle remaining ninety three through seven and a seven pin lead box to box but he's up against a rich Clark spare in the eighth frame. Leaves himself a tough one, but the wood could help out. Another question Ray Simino was telling me before we began the broadcast today. He had a question from a viewer about the terminology dead wood. And we see wood on the lane right now, and it helps Rich Lottie convert the spare. Why do they call it dead wood was the question, if in fact you can play it. Well, you checked the rule book for that. I did. It's you know, Deadwood is kind of a, a term we use interchangeably. Deadwood technically means wood that's out of play beyond the uh, line, two feet in front of the head pin, or, um, or elsewhere, not legal wood. So I, I know we call it Deadwood sometime, but really, technically, Deadwood cannot be played. All the wood you see there would be live wood at, at this point on the deck. There is a line two feet, 24 inches uh, toward the bowler from the head pin, and that's the Deadwood line. Rich Lottie trying to convert the split not able to do so and he'll take an eight box he has one twelve through nine right on the head pin leaving himself a spare opportunity rich comes in with a one twenty eight average Mark in the 10th frame. Yeah. Trying to fill the mark with an 8, and he'll finish with a 118. 128 with the spare fill. 128 for Rich Clark. Trying to do too many things at once here, Michael. That's... <laughs> So a good first string for Rich Clark. Now Rich Lottie. But Mike Morin right on top of me like a hawk, picking up my scoring error. As long as you promise to cover me when I mess up on the automated <laughs> scoring, which is inevitable, folks, we recommend you keep score at home to make sure that everything is correct. Converted again. Be a very, very close match going into game number two. Ten box for Lottie, 118 through nine. Up against Rich Clark's 128. So we will be virtually even after this first string. Of course, unless Lottie puts a a couple of marks together here in the final frame. And there could be one right on the head pin, leaving himself a spare opportunity, but that wood, terrible wood, is not angled very well, and it is in play. So do you cap hit it? it right on the nose, right on the cap. That's what he's got to do. And did he do it? No. Whoa, he might get the ricochet. Nearly caught a break off the rebound off the left sidewalk. Well, if he makes this pin, we'll be dead even after one. And we are tied after one string of play in this match between Rich Clark and Rich Lottie from Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire. 128 each. Second string action is coming up in just a moment. Don't you dare go away. Candlepin Stars and Strikes continues on WNBS TV 50.
good first string, 128 apiece for bowlers Rich Clark and Rich Lottie. Rich Lottie will be first to bowl here in the second string at Lita Lanes. Dick Lutz with Mike Morin, happy to have you with us for a brand new season of Candleton Stars and Strikes on WNDS TV 50. Lottie starts out with a punch and gets a couple of pins. Our match today being directed by Larry Taylor, our chief engineer Paul Hunter. Working graphics is Kevin LaFon. On audio, Steve Drouss. Pete Hovenation is working the replay machine. Bob Dold, Steve Giordani, and Gary Van Nortwick are manning the cameras. And we would be remiss if we didn't note the passing of longtime director of Candleton Stars and Strikes, Vic Cross, who left us much too soon at the age of 41, just a couple of months back. And he was most instrumental in the beginning of this program many years ago on WNDS TV, and he will be missed. Well, that's very true, not only on a personal level, but whenever there'd be a question about the history or how the, you know, since you and I were new last season, you know, how did this work? What, you know, he would always, he, we could always go to him for the answer. And not only that, he was a heck of a guy. And yeah, most importantly, a very gentle man, very positive person, very hard worker. And he got to know a lot of the people who came to the broadcasts each and every week, the spectators, the mm -hmm. bowlers on a personal level. Yeah, a number of them told me they either visited uh, Victor in the hospital or had sent him mail. You know, he was as much a part of the show, if not more, than really any of us because he really uh, coordinated it very nicely. Lottie with 18 through two boxes of the second string. Now Rich Clark steps to lane 34 at Lita Lanes. Rich's son was entertaining the crowd before we began <laughs> taping here today. Rolling a couple of balls down with the, the old-fashioned between-the-legs method. Maybe we'll get a shot of him a bit later on as he watches his dad, and Rich rolls a spare in the first box of the second string. Rich's young son is seated on the lap of his mother right on the uh, bench. That's Brandon, four years old. And his first uh, shot down the lane was a nine box. He almost had a strike, in fact, and the crowd loved it. He's right behind Rich right now, so you can't see him. And Rich doesn't pick up the spare there. That's why you folks need to come and watch us in person. There's lots of fun things that happen in between the various matches that you don't, of course, get to see at home. And a nine box for Lottie and a seven pin lead. Two boxes into the second string. Well, we haven't given any bonus money away in this young season. Three marks in a row is a $50 prize, and we keep adding after that. I want to keep mentioning some of the names of the people that we received communications from during the offseason. Got a nice note from Helen Eldon of Randolph, Massachusetts. Thank you, Helen, for your nice note. And we'll get to several of the others as we go on here today. There were quite a few that came to the television station. A nine for Lottie, three nines in a row. Jim Gregatis is our bowler waiting in the wings. He's the third seed, and he'll face our winner today. Our runner-up today takes home $100. The winner goes on to bowl against Mr. Gregatis next week, and certainly the stakes increase as the ladder advances toward the number one spot, which is worth $1,000. Lottie converts the first mark for him in the second string. Rich Clark bowling just seven years. We mentioned his son Brandon also has a six-year-old daughter Lauren. And his wife Cynthia is here and Rich turned away from it and never saw the pins fall. He turned his back to it, heard the crowd roar, looked back and saw the pins down. He'll have to watch that one on television to see how it happened. <laughs> And he will convert with a strike. 
So we take a break. Four boxes into the second string. Rich Clark working on two marks in a row. And we have a pretty good match going on between Lottie and Clark from Lita Lanes in Nashua. Candlepin Stars and Strikes continues on WNDS TV 50. Rich Lottie gets ready to bowl in the fifth frame of the second string. In a match in which both bowlers have been bowling extremely well to this point. Working on a spare is Lottie. Right on the head pin and a spread eagle. Don't think we saw anybody convert this last season. It's basically one of those once a year shots. I used to make it all the time. <laughs> yeah, but she used two balls at once. Rich Lottie is just 29 years old. Works at Florentina's in Cambridge. And he'll take an eight box. I just uh, sent my daughter off to Leslie College in Cambridge here very recently, and I told Rich I'm going to come down and find Florentina's since I'll be spending a lot more time in Cambridge than I ever have. Yeah, but, but sending your daughter to Leslie College, can you afford to eat out? <laughs> you got a good point. <laughs> Maybe with a few more plugs, I can get a free free sandwich. Nice spare for Rich Lottie. He's been making some great shots. And he's going to have to keep doing that because it looks as though Rich Clark is in the zone. He's working on a spare strike combination going into the fifth frame. He has three marks and four boxes of the second string. And he's feeling much better. He had six marks in the first string on his way to a 128. Lottie had four marks on his way to his 128 in the first string. Lottie looking for some bonus money right here. $50 in bonus money for Rich Lottie. It's the first 50 of the brand new season. Ray Seminole's going to have to open up that cigar box full of 10 and 20s and pull out some, some coin here for Rich Clark's bonus money. But that's not a good fill on the spare, just two. He had a couple of poor fills in the first ring, a one and a two. So we'll have the $50. And the bonus money will stop there, at least for the moment. And he will take a nine box. Now Lottie working on a spare. And he doesn't come up with much. He fills with three. Leaving the double pinochle for his third shot, a piece of wood right in the middle. Four, six, seven, and ten. Jim Gregatis waiting in the wings to take on the winner of this match next week. Don Richmond two weeks from today. Gary Santora three weeks from today. And eight box for Lottie. And 70 through seven. Rich is a single guy, which allows him to bowl more often than some of us. <laughs> The opinions expressed on this broadcast. <laughs> He's been on Channel 50 some 15 times over the years. I think a lot of those were skins shows, if I recall. And really only one show last year where he was the top seed and got knocked out by Hawk Hallis. And a 10 box for Rich Lottie, now Rich Clark who already has 86 through six, Lottie with 80 through eight. So whatever Rich Clark gets in the next two boxes pads to his lead. Hey. 
breaks up the split and leaves himself a pretty good lead. And if that pin rolls backwards the other way, but it's coming this way and it's coming out of play. Yeah, once it pretty much gets out of the uh, the light, it's generally over the deadwood line. It's starting back the other way. Give it a second. It's picking up some speed. It's still rolling. Watch out. Don't go away, friends. <laughs> it's going to pick up some momentum could, as it gets take to that the pin. Then. Here it comes. There it goes. <laughs> and there is no time limit in this game, so no 24-second clock. There's enough of an overhang from the wooden part of the lane to the metal deck that uh, the pin falls and picks up some speed. And a spare. It could just as easily have knocked that three pin to the right to take out the six. Into the six and yeah. into the ten. The angle wasn't right, but you're right, Dick. That could happen. Rich Lottie is on, Rich Clark, rather, is on fire. That's his second spare strike combination of this game. And he's cruising toward about a 150 game if he continues to mark. So Rich Lottie needs to respond now with two boxes left in the second string. He puts it right on the head pin but can't break up the split. 3-6-10 on the right, four pin on the left. Some wood somewhat in front of the uh, four pin. He needs to pull one out of the hat right here, and he doesn't quite do it. Rich, as you saw, a high single of 204. I can only dream about playing 204. A nine box for Rich Lottie. 89, so he'll need a mark to break 100 in the second string. There's only, I'm sorry, there's only two marks. He had a three and a four field, Dick, so the marks weren't too helpful for him this game. Four horsemen right side. And the wood will it be a factor if it comes up and touches that head pin. But it rolls away, so the wood is not a factor, at least for the moment, unless it ricochets. Just missed it. So it will be a sub-100 game for Rich Lottie. Finish with a nine box and a 98 in the second string. Now Rich Clark looks for more bonus money. And more importantly, he looks to pad the lead over Rich Lottie going into the third string. The bonus money shot. Well, he leaves the 510 with some wood. That looked like a strike ball to me. Yeah, it did. This, the wood comes into play here for sure. And let's see how Rich plays it. Just missed it. One thirty-four and one thirty-five for Rich Clark with a box to go. He leads by thirty-seven pins plus whatever he gets in this tenth frame. That could have been a three-bagger, huh? Leaving the five and the ten last time on a, a reasonably solid hit. Could have easily been three for $500. 145 plus a couple of balls for Rich Clark. And again, he grabs the head pin. He's been right on the head pin with just about every shot. One fifty three second string for Rich Clark a fifty five pin lead for Clark going to the third game of this match between Rich Clark and Rich Lottie as Candlepin Stars and Strikes continues from Lita Lanes in Nashua New Hampshire on WNDS TV. Rich Clark will be first to bowl in the third string of this first match of the new season on Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNBS TV. And look at that, right off the bat, he buries a strike. Off the headpin for one of the few times in the match on that ball right there for Rich, who has really been piling up the marks. 
here in the match against Rich Lottie. Despair on top of the strike, and he starts out continuing the torrid pace. He has been relentless. Last game, I think he had three strikes. And Clark starting this game with yet another. Rich Lotti responds. Don't go away. That pin could move back to it. Hold on a second here, everybody. Is that going to move? It's coming right at it. It's going to have a shot. Now it's going to miss it. Had to bend the nine pin. Would have gone. Lotti will get the spare. Start the third string, and to say he needed it would be somewhat of an understatement. Trailing by 55, going in, and up again uh, against a pair of marks to start the third game. Rich Lottie on the head pin. Well, you know that could have been a double for Rich Lottie because his first ball was solid, leaving that 10 pin. So both bowlers start the third string. With Marks. Rich Clark. $50 shot right here. Put it in the bank. Three marks in a row for Rich Clark. That makes another $50. So he has $100 in bonus money. Not an easy shot, but there's enough wood. I think he can work with that. Each succeeding mark worth another $20, and he will not make it, or will he? Don't go away. Here it comes. Just didn't take it. <laughs> very, very entertaining match in progress. And a 10 box. Now Rich Lottie looking for some bonus money. He's going to need the pins too. He's coming from a deep, deep hole. Buries the shot on the head pin, but leaves a tough spare. Actually, well, the wood is there, Michael. I think the wood is perfect if he uh, scrapes the uh, pin on the left just right. Probably about on the stripe, huh? That's what he's trying to do. He's got it. Still hasn't made any progress, really, though, because he hasn't uh, filled his third frame. Mark to Mark, first three. It's McGuire and Sosa. <laughs> They're right at each other. Now a chance here to get into that 55-pin margin, if he can convert this spare. And he does. Another $20 in bonus money. And we'll take a break. Both bowlers on fire as the 55-pin lead for Rich Clark. Rich Lottie's going at it as Candlepin Stars and Strikes continues on WNDS-TV. All right, Rich Lottie ready to go in the fifth box of the third string. Rich Clark took a 55-pin lead into this third string. And now he is watching the pins continue to move. Rich Clark from Bedford, Rich Lottie from Stoneham, Massachusetts. Clark, the lefty, was the fifth seed. Lottie was the fourth seed. And Clark has the lead. Both bowlers on fire here in the third string. Clark tries to convert and almost makes a great shot. Should mention that Rich Clark finished fourth here at Lita Lanes for their annual Easter tournament, which is a big money event held every year, obviously on Easter Sunday. He won uh, $800 for fourth place. The winner for 5,000, Mike Poulin, haven't seen him on the show in a few years. Chip Carson second. Third was Tommy Olster, who appeared with us on our first ladder last year. Rich Clark fourth. And Craig Holbrook, who also appeared with us last year, came in fifth for $600. That's a, a major event here at Lita Lane every year. 20-string event. 
Nice way to spend Easter Sunday if you make a lot of money. Clark will be open again this box, his third consecutive open frame. As he waits for the wood to settle down. He'll take a nine box there. He has 84 through six. And now let's watch Rich Lottie, who's working on four marks in a row to start out the third frame. Right on the head pin, but didn't get a break. Looked like he deserved better than that with the shot. Only gets a four. Can't tell if that wood's going to be very helpful. Well, let's see how he plays it. I might go all the way to the left. That's what he tried. But he'll still remain ahead of Rich Clark. Barely in this game. But still with a long way to go to come back. Really, you figure through a half a game, he's only made five pins back from a 55-pin deficit. So now he's got to come up with an extra 50 pins in five frames. He can't afford too many more open frames, that's for sure. And the sad thing is he's hitting the head pin, which is what he wants to do. And he'll be open this frame. And it will be a nine box and an 89 through six. I want to tell you about the Kahala Chinese Restaurant and Lounge right next door to Lita Lane's where they have a wonderful luncheon buffet every day. And you will enjoy coming to the Kahala if you like Chinese food. You make sure that when you're in Nashua, you stop at the Kahala Chinese Restaurant and Lounge right next door to Lita Lane's, 350 Amherst Street, Route 101A in Nashua. Take exit 8 if you're coming from Manchester, exit 7 if you're coming from the south off the Everett Turnpike. Phone in your orders ahead at 603-889-5200. But if you really enjoy Chinese food and love Chinese buffets, you will love the buffet that they put out at the Kahala Chinese Restaurant and Lounge. When you're in Nashua, do what we do when we come to Lita Lane's. We go to the Kahala Chinese Restaurant and Lounge for wonderful Chinese food. They have great takeout. They offer delivery service, a beautiful banquet facility, and entertainment on the weekends. The Kahala Chinese Restaurant and Lounge, 350 Amherst Street, right next door to Lita Lane's in Nashua. Rich Clark with the spare and the six fill. Looking to put this match away. Unable to convert there. He is in the driver's seat, no doubt about it. And he'll take a nine box, 109 through eight. Nothing short of marks and good fills, and that may not be enough at this point for Rich Lottie, who joined us one time last season as a top seed losing to Hawk Hallis, 337 to 320, back in February of this year. That's not going to help Rich Lottie picking one. And he'll take the other one right behind it. We'll have the bonus ball contest after the match where we will draw a postcard and try to match up a viewer with our winning bowler. A five box for Rich Lottie at a most inopportune time. And now Rich Clark box to box has added six pins to his lead. Leads by 61 pins. Tough luck for Lottie, who started out like a house of fire here in the third string with four marks in a row. $70 in bonus money, but has cooled off since. But not doing anything appreciably different on the first ball other than, you know, the last frame when he picked out the one. He's been on the head pin a little too flush, causing the, uh, the wide open splits. And it will be a nine box. Is that kind of day for Rich Lottie? 
still waiting for it, watching it wobble, but it won't go down. Now the final two boxes for Rich Clark, who leads by 61 pins in the match. And he'll strike right here, which effectively shuts out Rich Lottie. Now it's how much bonus money can he pile up? Well, it may be some. He'll have a chance if he converts this spare for $50 in bonus money. Woods at a tough angle down there. He will play it well. He's had a spare strike combination, I'm going to say probably four times today, I think, maybe five. Now looking for a strike, which would mean another $50. And really put an exclamation point on his triple. He was solid in the pocket. Can't quite get it to go. Finishes with a 147. And a 428 triple for Rich Clark. What a way to begin. Wow. We didn't have too many uh, scores higher than that last season. We'll have to go back and take a look. Other than Gary Carrington, I think. Where has Carrington been anyway? We haven't seen him yet. You know, stay tuned all season long. He'll be back, I promise you. Last year's Tournament of Champions winner. All right, Rich Lottie with an eight box, so it'll be Rich Clark advancing to take on Jim Gregatis. Jim Gregatis, our third seed next week, and we'll come back and meet today's bowlers in just a moment from Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire, as Candlepin stars and strikes, as you see Rich Lottie's strike in the 10th frame. Candlepin stars and strikes will continue on WNDS-TV from Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire. We'll be right back. Final score in the match was Rich Clark 428, Rich Lottie 356. Rich Lottie, $100 for being runner-up, $70 in bonus money. He ran into a buzzsaw there this afternoon. Yeah, he bowled great. Even if I did bowl up to par, I don't know if I could have enough to beat him. Well, congratulations. We look forward to seeing you again on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Rich Lottie from Stoneham, Massachusetts, ladies and gentlemen. And now let's play the bonus ball contest and bring up our champion, Rich Clark. And he will attempt to, uh, uh, well, he'll roll a ball and we'll attempt to match him up with a winner and see if we can uh, do that with the, one of our contestants who sends in a card. A nine. And let's see if we can match it up with a winner. Mike Morin draws it out of the uh, barrel here. And it is uh, Mona Jarvis of Andover, Vermont. And I think it's a seven. Dick. Mona picked a seven, so we didn't have a match. So what a surprise that someone picked a seven. <laughs> now let's have Rich Clark. Congratulations to Rich. That was uh, quite a display of, of marks as you were on, really right on the head pin for most of the match. Yeah, I had a little problem in lane 34 on the first string. I made an adjustment, and uh, I was able to come around. And once I got in the groove, um, it carried over to 33, and it was, uh, it was nice to get the, the marks together. And... Uh, it felt good once it get going. Well, $100 in bonus money, and you move on to take on Jim Gregatis next week, and we'll look forward to seeing you then. Rich Clark from Bedford, New Hampshire, ladies and gentlemen, our winner here this afternoon, and that sets up next week's match with Jim Gregatis. Jim Gregatis out of Brockton. It'll be his fourth visit to uh, WNDS, so we look forward to seeing you again next Sunday. That'll do it from Lita Lanes in Nashua for Mike Morin and our entire WNDS crew from Nashua, New Hampshire. Thanks for watching Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS. We'll see you next week.